In this video, we're gonna look at our new power distribution box for the Sony Burano called the DB8. It's available in a V-mount and a gold mount version, and it attaches to the back of the camera using the V-mount interface. Before we install it though, we'll add our link cable, and that will allow us to trigger the camera using a three pin fisher. We'll take our 2.5 millimeter plug, align it with the hole on the back of the box, snap that in. Then we'll use the cable guides here, loop this around, go back out the bottom, and then we'll click this onto the camera. We'll guide our cable around the back here and under the bottom, and then into the remote port on the side here. You'll see that there's another plug for the grip, and we're not gonna use that, that's for Sony's handle. Some V-mount products fly off during operation, and this one won't do that. But for peace of mind, we've included a deadlock bracket that attaches to the DB8 and the camera body. We'll align the four screws with the corresponding holes and use a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Now we're ready to install our battery and they range in size from this tiny core micro battery to this giant digital 90 from Anton Bauer. If you have a battery of this size, we have a positioning feature on the power plate itself where you can loosen these three screws and reposition so that your power ports are exposed. So we'll loosen these three screws with the same 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, slide the plate over, re-tighten, and now we can use larger batteries without blocking our power outlets. For smaller batteries, push the plate all the way to the right and you'll still have access to your power outputs. When a battery is installed, you can see that we have a glowing LED light here, and that will show if a battery is in good standing. We also have a four pin XLR DC input, which is great for attaching a block battery. When a block battery is installed, the LED for DC input will glow green, and that takes priority, leaving your onboard battery fully charged. When the black battery drains past 12 and a half volts, the onboard battery is then selected as the active source. The DB8 talks to smart batteries, including Anton Bauer, and converts that data into what the camera can read. Then it's displayed in the OLED screen as percentage. Power outputs include two D taps on top at battery voltage. We have a screw lock USB-C, which has power delivery. It's five volts at three amps. We have two 24 volt three pin fishers and that deliver a combined two and a half amps, including RS capability. And we have two two pin limos at battery voltage. We're gonna do a deep dive into power real quick, so bear with me. Batteries have different capabilities. This one is 10 amps capable. Some have a 12 amp limit. Some go all the way up to 20. So what we've done is included a toggle switch on the side of our uh, DB8 here and you should set that to match your battery's capability. So what our smart fuse does is it monitors the current that's going to the camera body. And at 14 volts, the Burano uses about 2.8 amps. So the remaining uh, budget goes to accessories. In this case, it's 6.2 amps. Now, if you go over that on your accessories, let's say you're using lights, uh, wireless transmitters and focus motors and the focus motor hits the end of a lens or something like that causing a surge of current, uh, the accessories will shut off and the camera will remain on. So you can stop your recording and uh, reset your configuration. That way the clip is not corrupted in the camera. This is a box that has a load resistor in it and this will simulate an overcurrent situation. So we'll jam this into our DTAP. Now, the smart fuse red light came on. All of the accessory outputs are disabled, but you can see that the camera is still running. Before you can press the reset button, you have to fix the problem. So that does nothing. We first have to remove the excess load. Now we can push the smart fuse reset button and our outputs are now enabled. Last couple of things, when the LAN cable is installed, the 24 volt three pin fisher has RS capability. So any ARRI standard follow focus unit can trigger the camera using this port. The power plates on the DB8 are user swappable. So if you have a gold mount version and you need V-mount for a project, you can purchase the V-mount plate separately. You can also adapt this box to the Sony Venice using a special three pin fisher cable that plugs into the back of the box here. These products are available now at mid49.com.